Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to Ham Radio K0PIR. Look at what I got here. WSJTX JT Alert. I have Ham Radio Deluxe Logbook in the background. And I'm using the new FT8 mode. Boy, it's a fast mode, but it's a lot of fun. I'll show you how I do it on the ICOM 7300. Okay, let's go through everything. Let's start with the radio. I'm using two cables, a CIV cable and a USB cable. My CIV cable is used for rig control. And I open up uh, Ham Radio Deluxe, the uh, radio control program, and connect using the CIV cable. Let me pull it up real quick. You can see I've got it going here. And basically all the use this for is tuning. I can hit tune and uh, tune my antenna. Uh, I can change uh, power, turn off the noise reduction, noise blinker. I can adjust my uh, audio gain, RF gain. Uh, I don't use any filters on these digital modes, of course, but uh, that's what I use it for. And then uh, my USB cable, I use it with uh, WSJTX. And I can use uh, a split frequency with it. I'll go through the setup of WSJTX in just a second. Let's take a look at the radio. Up in the top left-hand corner, uh, you'll see I'm operating split mode. USB D on uh, 20 meters right now. But let's take a look at it. Hit menu, set, connectors, and I'm going to go up to the very top. Those are the settings I have. Next screen 50 and 50%, 40% on the US modulation level. Data modulation is set to mic and ACC. Data modulation at USB. Now uh, take a look at the CIV. I don't normally have that uh, linked, but I do right now because I was using it with the Mac. And uh, you may want to uh, bypass this, but this is the way that I have it set up right now. It's linked. My CIV USB baud rate is 115.2 and my USB echo back is on. I'm going to go up to the first screen on this. CIV baud rate auto and then the, all this is the default. So normally I don't have that linked. If you look at my other articles on k0pir.us and in the beginning, I don't think uh, when I was using WSJTX that I had anything set for that. And to simplify things, I'm using uh, the two cables, and I am using a CW and RIDI FSK. Uh, you may, if you're just using the one cable, the USB cable, you may have these turned off here and just using USB SIN and have it set to RTS. But uh, this is the way that I have it set up and I'll leave it, leave it this way. I'm going to exit out of here. And this is the screen that I use when I'm operating digital mode. I'll show you what my power level set. It's set at 60%. Mic gain uh, doesn't come into play on digital modes. But uh, my power is set to 60%. And uh, it's set there because, you know, it's uh, pretty simple. I, I use an amplifier in the morning when I'm on uh, a net. And uh, I always have my RF power at 60%. So I just kind of leave it there. And uh, the, the rest of it is controlled through the software. Let's take a look at the function. Uh, noise reduction is off. Noise blinker is off. And AGC is off. To turn AGC off, you just hold that down, and on the fast, I turned it off. I can change it by rotating the tuning knob. You can't see it in the picture, but I'm rotating the tuning knob and changing it. 
let's see what the default is 0.3 and I just turn it off for digital modes and I'll go back and hit the menu and go to meter and that's the screen I like to look at I can tell uh, if I have any ALC at all but I can look down and see what my SWR is and uh, of course I know I'm on the uh, right mode USB D and I'm using split mode sometimes when I change bands uh, I think every time when I change bands my second VFO will still be on uh, the previous band so I, I have to hit the AB button on the top right just above the tuning knob I just hold it down for a second and it syncs up the VFO A, VFO B uh, but I do that when I change bands let me show you real quick I, in WSJTX I'm gonna go to uh, 40 meters and you see uh, now if I wanted to operate on 40 uh, my second VFO is still at 14074 so if I want to uh, if I hit the tune button it'll do it automatically but if I hit the AB button on the radio hold it down for a second it syncs it up let's go back to 20 meters and you see it's the VFO B is still on 40 I hit the A slash B button on the radio just touch it for one second and it puts it back on the, the right band for me and below we can look at one other thing the filter I'll hold that down and I've got it set to 3.6 and uh, let's see what the the default is 1.2 to change that you just touch the bandwidth and rotate the turning dial tuning dial and make it whatever you want it to be you can put it on three I put mine on 3.6 and of course sharp and then I'll hit the exit button to get out so that's my filter okay I can't think of anything else of course I'm using the uh, using my auto tuner my uh, AT600 Pro 2 auto tuner and uh, I can't think of anything else on the radio so let's take a look at the software I'm on 20 meters right now and uh, as I said I've got a couple of different configurations I've got one uh, for the radio it's just the ICOM 7300 and that's the cable and it's connected right to the radio I have a second configuration that I was using and uh, I'm using HRD as the rig in WSJTX so this one for the rig I'm using the 7300 and this one for the rig I'm using HRD I just started using this one and I, I like it uh, I like it using it uh, let's go into file and settings and on the uh, general tab I'm going to move over a little bit and uh, let's take a look at the general tab my call sign and you of course uh, probably have all this filled in uh, this is what I, I like to have selected and I don't want uh, disabled transmit after sending 73 when I'm calling CQ uh, I like to just keep a keep it running and going but you may want to select this uh, the transmit uh, watchdog after 10 minutes and then uh, nothing else on here these are uh, personal preferences for the radio uh, uh, as I showed you uh, this configuration the rig is the ICOM 7300 I'm using the USB cable now ham radio deluxe is using the CIV cable so I'm using the uh, the USB cable the baud rate I bumped these up since I first started uh, I've got it increased to 115.2 and when I first started last year I had a laptop computer and I left the baud rate low I just figured it was more reliable but I've got it bumped up uh, to the max for this one and uh, it's working good I haven't had any problems with it 
this is all the default push to talk is cat uh, the uh, the mode is none and this is real important the mode is none and uh, split operation is rig and I like to use it uh, this way you could try fake it when I'm using ham radio deluxe is the rig I have to use fake it because I, ha I run into a problem uh, it won't switch back to the correct frequency so when I use the ICOM 7300 as a rig uh, for a split operation I can use the rig and I just kind of I kind of like it that way. I can hit uh, test and it should turn green. I can use test push to talk and it should turn red and my radio will key up. Uh, it's not putting out any power when I do it. It's just testing it. Click on it again and it turns it off. The audio. Now this is the USB cable, USB audio codec. And uh, I'll show you, you know, when I got this computer going I installed the ICOM driver off of ICOM's website and then a couple of days later after some Windows 10 updates it updated the driver and I haven't had any problem with it let me bring up device manager and I'll show you what version I have This is the Silicon Labs USB driver. And right now it is uh, the driver date is 2015 and the driver version is 6.7.1. I think the, the one on the ICOM website is probably a 2013 date. But uh, I started off with that one. I just figured it was the safest thing to do. The prolific USB to serial, that's my uh, CIV cable. And I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, it's worked good for me. It was a cheap cable. I got it off of eBay. And uh, you'll find the link on my website. So let me go ahead and close that. The input and the output is the same. The USB audio codec. The USB audio codec. I didn't change anything in here. didn't change this. Transmit macros, I've got a, a few in here. You can add the ones that you like. On FT8, it's a little tricky uh, selecting those. I'll get good enough at it sooner or later uh, to be able to use them. But reporting, uh, I think all of this is... I may have selected to enable PSK reporter spotting. But uh, these are personal preferences. Prompt me to log the queue, so I, I like having that one checked. And uh, the uh, DB reports to the comments. Frequencies, I don't think I did anything in there. Colors, didn't change any of that. Advanced, I didn't uh, change any of that. Select OK. So that's WSJTX. And uh, this is JT Alert up at the top. Let's take a look. Show you some of the uh, more important settings in it. I am using uh, all of this. Uh, this is uh, pretty much personal preference, what you want to do. I left a lot of it on this uh, new computer. I left it set uh, the way that it came. But uh, for logging, I'm using Ham Radio Deluxe version 6.4, so I've got it enabled. HRD version, got this radio dial checked. And then my log name is K0PIR. This is my new log. When I got this computer, it's an HP desktop. I set up Hamria of Deluxe in the logbook. And when I set up the logbook, I set it up on a database, uh, the uh, MySQL database. And it's a Maria database. There's a link on uh, my website uh, for a YouTube video that shows you how to do it. And boy, this is a lot faster than the Microsoft Access. I don't think I'll ever go back to Microsoft Access. I've got about 26,000 contacts, QSOs in my logbook. And it takes a little bit when I'm using Access to search through them. But uh, using this uh, SQL database, it doesn't uh, take very much time at all. It is fast. So uh, this, uh, this pre-populates for you. You don't have to do anything. 
Um, can't think of really anything else. Uh, this, the applications, the auto start, I like having. I used to have QSO Relay. I don't need it anymore. Um, I like to have WSJTX start and then close when I uh, open JT Alert. So all I have to do is open JT Alert and it will open WSJTX automatically for me. So I like that. And I, uh, down here at the web services, the online logbooks, uh, I'm using uh, the online XML call book, uh, QRZ.com and uh, have the lookup here the online logbooks if you want to upload you can do that but uh, ham radio deluxe does the uploading for me so I don't need to uh, need to use that and then a lot of this uh, a lot of this other stuff is just personal preference so the important thing to me is the logging that's real important to me and then, of course, I like to see, uh, uh, when I log it, I like to see the name uh, get generated and put into my logbook. So this is important to me. I'll just click OK. And this is the program. Uh, this is what I got. Uh, I'm using WSJTX and JT Alert. I've selected the mode FT8. I'm using down here, if you take a look, uh, auto sequencing or automatic sequencing. I'm using it because it'll jump right through the transmissions. It makes it uh, a lot easier. I don't think I'd be able to do it if I wasn't able to use auto sequencing. Maybe later on after I practice some more. But uh, boy, this is good. Let me okay, see. I'm going to get right over here. Select CQ. Got lock, transmit, and receive. I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to transmit on the odd. So I'm going to select enable. The odd is the odd seconds. There it goes. I'm transmitting. There were a couple, well, yeah, one other station calling CQ up here. Let's see if anybody comes back to me. I don't see anybody coming back to me. It may take two or three tries. Poor band conditions. Okay, I'm going to end the clip uh, here. It's been a long clip. And if you have any questions, please comment below. I appreciate all the emails I get. And I'll do another video on uh, actually operating some of the FT8. It's pretty exciting, and I have a good time doing it. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. 73 and good DX.